Hello and welcome to the Door to Door YouTube channel. Today I want to talk about interference and exactly what that is and how it pertains to your garage door opener. Door to door, door to door, door to door. So with interference, the first thing you'll probably notice if you have an interference issue is your remotes. Um, your remotes are gonna be working intermittently, they might not work at all, or you may need to be like right on them to uh, get them to work. That is often a cause from interference. Um, interference is gonna be overlapping radio frequencies in the garage that can kind of confuse the machine. Um, garage doors typically operate in the three to 400 megahertz range. So anything else that might be emitting a radio frequency in that that um, that range and that frequency band it could cause interference with the garage door opener. And again, you're gonna have issues like your remotes keep has um, just acting funny, either not working. Um, good way to test if it's interference is generally it's gonna be all the remotes, just not one. So if you have more than one remote, try another remote. If they're all have a distance issue, then you know, most likely it's gonna be interference. If it's just one, then that may be a bad remote or a bad battery. Um, so just check to see if it's one or all of them. Generally, the wall button will not be affected, so try the wired in wall button. Um, as long as it's a wired in, it's a wireless, you might see the issue, but if it's a wired in wall button, give that a tap. If that works you know, 100% of the time, every time, then that's another clue that it's more the, um, it could be interference and not an issue with the, um, you know, not an issue with the motor itself uh, that you can look into. The second thing is, always put new batteries in. Um, a lot of these problems, and a similar problem is when the battery goes weak, that can cause distance too, similar to an interference problem. So always put a new battery in. Um, it's just those flat, flat round uh, three volt batteries. I think the 2602 they are. Um, you can find them generally about everywhere. So throw a new battery in, give that a shot. Um, with your keypads, it's most likely a nine volt battery. I think GDs have triple A's in them. So put new batteries in everything. That's the first place I'd start because that might solve the issue right there. Second is, most of the time when we see interference, it is caused by LED light bulbs. Now, LED light bulbs, especially the more inexpensive ones, um, the bottom, if the ballast isn't well insulated, that can emit a radio frequency um, and enough to confuse the machine, cause interference, especially since those light bulbs generally are going to be um, screwed into the back of the machine, which is where the circuit board is, where the receiver is, where the antenna is. Um, everything that accepts those signals is right there. So it's right there to cause uh, cause an issue um, if you start having one. So check for LED light bulbs. There are garage safe LED light bulbs. Um, Genie makes one. Um, they are a little pricey. Um, I've used the EcoSmart uh, light bulbs from Home Depot, the A19, just the regular ones that look like, you know, the old school 60 watt fluorescent or not fluorescent, 60 watt uh, regular incandescent bulb. They have been okay for us. Uh, like I said, they're not rated to be uh, garage door safe, but I've been using them for almost a year now and I haven't had any issues. So that's one that so far we feel safe. But um, if you do start having issues with that one, then you may need the garage door safe LED bulb. Another little disclaimer with LED light bulbs. Um, not just in the machine, but in the garage. Uh, if you have a bunch of LED lights in the garage, that can also cause interference. Um, I had one where a customer had LED lights on a timer, 7.30 at night, timer came on, remotes went dead. In the morning, timer would go off, lights would go off, remotes came back. So that was an easy one to pinpoint. So it's not just LED light bulbs in the machine, it can be just anything around the machine uh, with LED light bulbs could cause the issue as well. So a little trial and error, plug them in, unplug them, turn them on off, see if you can figure out exactly what it could be. Another thing that can cause interference are Wi-Fi routers. So if you've got a very powerful Wi-Fi router in the garage, that could be an issue. Um, you know, almost everything nowadays is on Wi-Fi, so those signals are just bouncing all over the place. So good idea if you're having interference issues, maybe try taking the Wi-Fi router out of the garage, if it's a place you keep it, or if it's just you know in the next room, maybe move it somewhere more central into the middle of the house. That is something to try, um, you know, if you're just troubleshooting some different things. Uh, wireless security cameras. If you have wireless security cameras all around the house, those can cause interference as well. Um, if it is an issue, or if it just became an issue, did you just put some in? Think about anything you might have recently just installed. Like I said, cameras, baby monitors, anything. Again. 
sending wireless signals that would be coming into your garage. Um, but if it is one of those, like I said, most likely you'll notice you install these things, all of a sudden the garage door remotes and keypad are giving you an issue. Uh, so hopefully you can figure that one out if it's something like that. Ham radios and CB radios also cause interference. I personally haven't seen this, but um, I've heard about it. Don't see ham radios and CB radios too much anymore, but they still come up. We do still have a few customers that operate ham radios, things like that. Um, but I personally haven't seen that causing interference, but that can cause interference as well. And then lastly, maybe something that your neighbor had done, uh, something that your neighbor maybe recently installed or anything like that, especially if you're in a community where the houses are very close together. Um, so again, ask your neighbors, you know, any LED lights they might have just installed or anything that pulls a lot of power on a timer. Um, that's usually what I say, look for, or just pulls a lot of power in general that they may have just installed around the time you started having issues. And then just look for weird things. Like I said, anything that pulls power, I've heard the Sub-Zero refrigerators, people, you know, put them in the garage when they get a new one, um, they pull a lot of power, can cause interference. Um, a weird one I had the other day, it was one of those air conditioners that, um, you know, I think they call them the casement air conditioners that have the little hose that you just run out the window. It was off, but plugged in and killing the remotes. As soon as we unplugged it, um, they all came back. So that was a funny one because it didn't even have to be on. Somehow it was sending some sort of frequency while it was off. So check for weird things. You may have to unplug. It's, it's a tricky one to, to solve. Some other symptoms you might notice that could be interference. Apart from remotes and keypads, you may experience some ghosting where the um, door can kind of open and close by itself. So if you have those kind of weird intermittent opening and closing issues, again, that could be an interference problem. So just troubleshoot it like you would. Check for LED bulbs, check the remotes, check everything that you can think of that um, you know sends a radio frequency that could be causing that issue. Again, it's a difficult one to pinpoint because it's not all the time. It's sometimes. It might be when something's on, off. So it does require a little bit of trial and error. There are some things you can get to block the frequencies. I haven't personally tried them, but I've heard they're out there. Um, and there's also some tools you can get that help you identify uh, radio frequencies that are in the area. Again, we haven't gotten that far into it. Generally, it's LED bulbs or something we can pinpoint in the garage, especially on the residential side. When you start getting into more commercial things, then you might... Um, then one of those things might be valuable. I may pick one up. We'll see. I'm, I'm interested to see if I can figure it out. But it's something that we see, but usually we can figure out. It's usually, like I said, nine times out of ten, it's the LED bulb or something pretty obvious in the garage. But So we haven't needed to get one of those, but we might look into getting you know, some of those frequency um, identifiers. But they are out there if it's really a tricky one that you, uh, you really just can't figure out. And then lastly, um, LiftMaster especially, and I'm sure Genie and the other um, brands, LiftMaster being the one we use primarily, uh, their newest security 2.0 um, frequency. Generally, I have seen very little issues with interference. So that's one thing you can do. You can upgrade to the better frequency. Um, the FCC kind of dictates what frequencies the manufacturers can use. So depending on how old it is, we've seen a lot with the purple buttons. They were big. Um, that's the one before the security 2.0 um, switch over. Back in I'm say like 2011, I think it was. Um, back those purple ones, they were probably the most notorious for having interference issues. So once we get people, usually once we get people on the newest frequency, a lot of the interference issues go away. If you have interference, which is just tough, if you have a if you have an opener that is working fine, and that's the only thing wrong with it is you're getting this issue with the remotes and things like that. But it is getting older, most likely. Like I said, they kind of did away with those purple buttons in 2011, I believe. Maybe 2012 would be last year that you might see one manufactured. So already that's going to be over 10 years old, which you know, plus or minus 10 years is lifespan on these machines. So if it is an interference issue, I would say you know if it's that old, you know, replacing the machine, you know, most likely 99% of the time solves all your issues in that respect. And now they have the security 3.0 that'll be coming out at the end of the year. And I'm going to assume that's going to be even more, more um, on the side of resisting interference because, you know, by this time they're aware. I mean, the older ones from 30 years ago, I don't know if they, uh, the people making them back then realized how many things were going to be wireless and all these radio frequencies that'd be floating through the air, um, you know, 30 years later. But they're, you know, obviously aware of it now and the newer ones are more and more um, adept at uh, resisting that, those interference issues and making sure everything works properly. So that's just a quick general overview on interference. Um, again, it's something that's tricky to figure out, but 
uh, you know, a little trial and error. Generally, you can figure it out, especially in a residential setting if it's just one or two openers, you know, in a small garage. You know, you get to these big commercial um, settings, then then you might need to get a little bit more in depth. You might need some some RF tools to really pinpoint that. But on a residential setting, give those things a try. Look for anything that's pulling a lot of power. Kind of unplug it, test it, test it from different distances. Um, if it does start working, make sure it's still working out by the road because generally they should work from about 100 feet away. Um, your, your handheld remote when you're coming up to the garage. So just try everything, make sure it works. And yeah, good luck with it. Uh, like again, it's very difficult even for us to, to figure out, but um, you know, once you do, you might be able to save that opener and give it a few more years of life, especially if your customer's not quite ready to, um, you know, to replace it. So that's pretty much it. If you have any more comments, questions, or any information you'd like about interference or you know, things you'd like me to cover in uh, upcoming videos, please let us know. And until then, this is Alan with Door to Door Garage Doors, where we want you to love your garage door. And if you're in the North Jersey area, we'd love to help you with your garage door. So give us a call. Okay, thanks. See you in the next one.